the first in the series to obtain the tensile strength directly would be you perform triaxial test and I hope you can recognize this situation very easily if I perform the test where I do stress strain relationship for different types of uh, samples and if I test them and what I have to do is I have to develop the uh, more envelopes alright. So, this line which you have drawn is a uh, more coulomb envelope and if I extend it up to the back and if I find out the intersection of the more coulomb envelope on the stress axis normal stress axis this is nothing but sigma t. So, a triaxial response can be utilized to obtain the tensile strength of the soils provided uh, you have done the test very very precisely. For your quick review uh, the intercept on the y axis we have defined as apparent cohesion. So, apparent cohesion is the one where we do not have any normal stress acting on the soil, but even then the soil exhibits some shear resistance. So, this could be because of uh, you know the inter -par uh, particle cohesion which is because of maybe carbonates or sulphates which are present in the soils. It could be because of the angularity of the grains of the sands and because of the angularity there could be a sort of a you know, normally what we call it as a gear assembly sort of a effect you know these are the two gear assemblies. So, in the case of the sands, if the sands are very irregular and if they are highly compacted, so what happens you know this is a sort of a gear assembly which gets formed and this itself might give you apparent cohesion in sands, you need not to have uh, any shear strength sorry any normal stress uh, which is applied to get the shear strength. So, we use this uh, sigma t obtained from the triaxial response of the clays as the benchmark of the value tensile strength alright. And I am sure uh, you must have done triaxial test. So, you have to apply these uh, membrane corrections and all to eliminate the values which are coming because of the confinement. What we did is uh, we did some literature review and we realized that uh, tensile strength has been attributed to the liquid limit of the soils. Why? Because indirectly liquid limit connotes to mineralogy alright. Uh, tensile strength has also been related with the plasticity index. Again the reason is simple because P i is indirect form of uh, you know understand or maybe the reflection of the mineralogy present in the soils. Then sigma t is also a function of cation exchange capacity again the same reason because of the mineralogy. The clay content, the clay content is the percentage fraction which is finer than certain size 2 microns. So, as the size decreases cation exchange capacity increases, surface area increases, liquid limit increases, P i increases all that series is still valid and the suction. So, psi corresponds to the suction value. And one interesting thing here to see is that the suction includes in it the state of moisture content of the soil. So, higher the moisture content lower the suction correct and A c is the activity of the soil. So, there are several types of relationships which are available in the literature. Uh, you will notice that tensile strength is a function of clay content more the clay content more the tensile strength. Uh, some people have correlated tensile strength with the W O M C moisture content at O M C and the moisture content at a given point in the soil mass liquid limit plasticity index clay content activity of the soil moisture content of the soil suction of the soil and so on. I would say that this is a sort of a you know journey in terms of the evolution of the subject. So, suction came quite recently in the picture before that suction was not included in defining the tensile strength, but people have realized that suction is the one which includes all other parameters into it because suction of the soil is uh, a parameter which talks about its physico chemico mineralogical response. So, if I measure the suction or if I measure the cation exchange capacity I can get sigma t values. This work was done by my two masters students uh, uh, both of them are incidentally in dark group now and they are doing extremely well. One was the, the uh, Mr. Shinde and uh, another one is uh, Ramanna. These guys have uh, done fundamental studies related to uh, tensile strength determination 
and what we realized is that uh, you know the relationships which are only single parameter relationships cannot be much encouraged uh, because you cannot link directly clay content with the sigma t and so on. So, this is the commentary which we created on the subject. So, generalized relationships uh, of this type was developed sigma t is some function multiplied by clay content c c and psi suction and uh, I hope you are conversant with the symbols by this time and uh, this is how we validated this equation number 1 and number 2 equation does not consist suction in it and it deals with only clay content and cation exchange capacity. So, what we have done is uh, by using these equations uh, we have uh, obtained the sigma t computed and this sigma t measured is from the triaxial test and we have shown that there is a good relationship between uh, the experimentally obtained results from the triaxial testing and uh, both the equations yield good results. I am sure you will realize that uh, these equations require determination of uh, two parameters which cannot be obtained in every geotechnical engineering laboratory is it not except for the clay content. Uh, cation exchange capacity requires some basic paraphernalia in the laboratory you know how it is done we have discussed about this. So, and of course, suction measurement. So, suction measurement is still not many people are doing all right. So, for the sake of convenience of both the parties where the suction measurement is being done and it is not being done or suction is known and not known you can rely upon these equations and you can go ahead with the design of the systems. So, I am sure you must have realized uh, these efforts were quite significant in obtaining the sigma t value of the geomaterial just based upon its uh, I always read it like this uh, physical and chemical response. So, it is a physical, chemical and mineralogical and mineralogical and physical. So, this is how you read this relationship. So, in short uh, we have the physics of the material the chemist, chemical state of the material and the mineralogical state of the material. These type of relationships become much more useful uh, for designing the clay, lin clay liners and the top covers for you know uh, different types of disposal facilities. I am sure you can realize one more you know advantage of having these equations particularly if the soils are contaminated. So, I can always find out what is the level of contamination of the soils and how these parameters get changed and hence how sigma t is going to get changed. So, this is how you know the developmental work uh, goes on. Uh, sir, here uh, by general uh, specifications we have three options to uh, analyze, analyze, analyze the tensile strength, three parameters, two parameters triaxial test and uh, in different cases we get different tensile strength. In? Uh, in, in, in these three, uh, three methods we get different sigma t values. Uh, right now we are preferring which case? Uh, we are taking... No, I did not follow your question. Can you repeat it? Sir, here we are considering three para three parameters, two parameters triaxial test and in every case sigma t is different. No, no, no. See, three parameter and two parameters are the equations. So, what you get is sigma t computed. So, sigma t computed you get from these two equations and sigma t is the tensile strength test which you get from triaxial testing. If you match these two, then you realize that there is a significant match between the two. Uh, so, so, what in first case you are considering uh, suction also and two uh, two parameters there is no suction values. So, in case of that uh, you will you will get something uh, sigma t values something lower. So, I think you missed the whole story. Uh, the whole story was that everybody is not capable of measuring the suction value yeah. because it requires a lot of uh, gadgets. So, idea was to give two equations if you can measure suction that is also good. Unfortunately, you cannot get rid of C C. So, cation exchange capacity has to be included. So, the choice is yours if you know the suction value you can substitute over there and if you do not have even then you can go ahead that is what the whole idea is. Yeah. So, what is the question? By, uh, uh, this is the uh, if, you, if we include suction value, uh, so we get more sigma t value this is the something concluded. It's basically root of psi the way the mathematics is and it is not so easy to decipher because a multi parameter system. So, I am sure you will realize that these powers will take care of something <coughs> alright. So, truly speaking this becomes uh, under root of C C 
into psi. This is how the mathematical representation is. As I said, these empirical relations are ascribed, subscribe, you know, are uh, basically these equations go in the name of the researchers who develop them. So, uh, you never question that Cassegrande's equation to find out CC value from the liquid limit, <laughs> is it not? <laughs> You always say 0 0.009 multiplied by LL minus 20, is this correct? So, he was the person who obtained this relationship. So, these are empirical relationships which might be useful for designing the, the systems. Now, your question should be that how based on only 3 triaxial data you are generalizing the thing. So, the answer would be this is a philosophy, you are free to conduct your experiments and then you get the sigma t values. And to substantiate this, I think you should realize that. Uh, if you look at this figure, as sigma t decreases, what is going to happen? The strength of the material is going to increase, all right, SU value is going to increase. So, simulating these type of things in the laboratory might be having limitations. So, you require different types of setups in particular, where extremely low values of the stress and strains can be measured number one and uh, you require very sensitive setups. Then only you can get extremely less values of sigma t's and then this portion of the graph can be completed. So, it is a hypothesis which is proven by some data points all right, 95 percent confidence band is not a very poor band to uh, convey the message that these relationships are working all right. Understand how the graph is plotted. No, no, graph is plotted uh, by getting the computational values of sigma t by using these equations which were derived earlier. We got a particular value for sigma t from triaxial, then for that how do you get the y value? For the same soil, for the same soil. That means, uh, I am sure you will realize that C L C C are associated with the soil. So, that means for the same soil if I plot sigma t computed and sigma t which is from the triaxial testing. This is how this sit. Must be like for every triaxial test, there will be a particular computed value, right? No, that will be very difficult because you know you cannot mold the soil sample with variable moisture contents. So when you are doing triaxial testing, your sample is fixed. That means the soil is fixed and the moisture content is fixed. In other words, the suction is also fixed. All right. So, suppose if I say number 1 soil for which suction is known, that means moisture content is known, CEC is known and CL is known. If I substitute the values over here and if I do a triaxial test, the two data points wherever they sit, this is the trend which emerges. So, the quick answer to your question would be that the sigma t values are for the same soils. No, sir, I did not understand for a particular sigma t with respect to the y axis, you got a value. Forget then about I sigma t. That is what I am saying is for the given soil, I have two values of sigma t, one which I get from computation and which I get from triaxial. Triax I am plotting column number 2 and 3 for the same soil, that is it. So, yeah. then the stars would not be there, right? Which one? Uh, the star mark T test triaxial. I, I thought uh, for each triaxial test, we will be like for a particular sample, we will be com computing the value numerically and then plotting. No, so that is what I said, this is all soil specific because for a given soil, the CL is known, CEC is known and suction is known provided W is constant. So, if you are interpreting this graph in such a manner that if moisture content changes, whether I can use this relationship or not, then this becomes an interesting question because psi itself is a function of moisture content. That means, for the same soil with same CL, same CEC, you might have to conduct several experiments by changing the moisture content and measuring the suction. Then you will be getting several circles and then you will be getting several sigma t values, that is possible. Otherwise, the simple way to look at this would be fix column number 1 and compute sigma t's by substituting these values and by conducting a triaxial test. Sigma t computed y, uh, in y axis. So, uh, why triaxial test uh, that star mark uh, result is coming that because 
for that sigma t computed will not be there. If I plot x, y, z together on a scale, this is a three dimensional plot which I will be getting and if I want to convert a three dimensional plot to a two dimensional plot, what I will be doing? I will be keeping one column constant, that is it. As simple as that. So, I am keeping the first column constant and plotting for that value y versus z. So, your sigma t MES measured is z, sigma t computed is one of the two values y and for a given x I am plotting these two. Rather than saying for a given sigma t, it is not that, for a given soil you have two sigma t values or three sigma t values which you are plotting. So, you have to look at it like this, for a given soil if I use equation 1, if I use equation 2 and if I do triaxial test where the results would be and if you plot them, this is what the picture would be. Uh, you said that uh, as uh, uh, undrained shear strength is increasing, that uh, tensile strength of the soil is decreasing. Sorry, undrained shear strength of the soil is increasing, tensile strength might be decreasing, correct. Decreasing. So, uh, what we observe in field is uh, SU by sigma V prime is 0 0.2. Uh, Constant. Uh, yes, or is a function of let us say pi. Yes, so okay. uh, we can say that uh, that uh, soil which is uh, below the certain depth uh, will have a lower tensile strength, and uh, soil above the means. Above so all the these are the limitations of the Casagrande's and Schmerzmann methods. Please remember, they have not talked about the tensile strength as such. They are blind of these parameters. I hope before you interpret all those relationships, you should realize that those relationships are blind of these parameters. They cannot be employed here. Their domain is totally different. There you are using one term, you know, OCR value also. Clear? So, that OCR is not coming to picture unless you relate OCR with the suction value. I hope now this point should be clear. Yeah, your analogy is good but try to understand the limitations of the existing relationships. Now, beyond imagination would be a fact that uh, you know linking the tensile strength which appears to be a mechanical property with the mineralogical, chemical and physical properties is a very interesting philosophy. So, do not go by the terms only CL, CC and Psi, this is a you know hunch of a researcher that he or she has used these parameters to obtain something which has a very wider application, fine. Read the papers which have been written by Sudarshan Chinde and uh, K. V. Ramanna, Anumant Rao, these relationships were derived by these three guys. There is a lot of philosophy which we have discussed in the paper.